Aloha and welcome to the University of Hawaii at Manoa. As you continue your journey through higher education here at UHM, you'll learn a lot about Hawaii and its natural beauty. Hawaii is home to numerous endemic species, meaning they can only be found here in the islands. It is our responsibility as researchers and as residents of Hawaii to preserve these unique organisms. In other terms, we have a kuleana to malama aina, a responsibility to take care of our land and all living things that live on it as well. Here at the Manoa campus, we have a wide variety of plants and animals that are unique to Hawaii. However, there are also numerous invasive species that can be seen scuttling about on campus. The most infamous of these is the mongoose. Yes, that mongoose. The bad news, for those who don't know, is that the mongoose has been shredding Hawaii's beautiful ecosystem one bird at a time. Invasive species cause a lot of harm to the ecosystem in which they are introduced to. This can range from disrupting the food pyramid that exists, to causing other species to go extinct, whether it's plants they prey on, other animals, or other invertebrates. Endemic native species that already deal with natural predators are at a serious disadvantage when invasive predators are introduced. It declines their populations even further. Today we're going to take a look at the history of the mongoose in Hawaii, why invasive species such as the mongoose are an issue, and what we can do now to help stop them. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the mongoose. However, I feel it is important that we should go over what a mongoose looks like. The mongoose is a small, weasel-like animal. It ranges in length, but is usually around two feet long with their tail taking up half of their overall body length. They have short legs, small rounded ears, and a pointed nose. Mongoose are opportunistic predators whose diet often consists of smaller mammals, birds, lizards, eggs, and more. They are also known to eat fruits and insects. The species of mongoose we have here in Hawaii is Herpestes javanicus, known as the small Indian mongoose. The small Indian mongoose can be found throughout Southeast Asia as well as Hawaii now that it has been introduced. The small Indian mongoose has caused the extinction of several species of birds in Polynesia. They are also responsible for the decrease in population for eight federally listed endangered Hawaiian birds. These birds include the Hawaiian crow, the alala, petrels, ua'u, and the Hawaiian goose, the nene. According to the Hawaii Invasive Species Council, it was estimated in 1999 that mongoose caused $50 million in damages to Hawaii and Puerto Rico annually. The mongoose can breed like crazy. They can have up to 14 babies per litter, and up to 10 to 15 litters per hectare. You end up with the same amount of mongoose as rats, but with much higher appetites and very vicious temperaments. Mongoose also present a health risk to humans as hosts of leptospirosis in Hawaii and the Caribbean, and as a rabies reservoir on several islands in the Caribbean. Hawaii has the highest prevalence of leptospirosis in humans requiring medical treatment in the United States. One common misconception about the mongoose in Hawaii is in regards to the reason for their introduction, biocontrol. For those who may not know, biocontrol is a method of keeping a population of species under control by introducing one of their natural predators. This misconception regarding the relationship of the mongoose and rats is that the mongoose didn't hunt the rats because they are active during alternate times of the day. This misinformation has been spread all over popular media, including the popular internet show Game Theory, which covered the relationship between mongoose and rats in an episode. 
You see, the Young Goose Ratata fiasco actually has parallels to the real world. In the 1800s, Hawaii, yeah, the Hawaii that Pokemon's Alola region happens to be based on, had problems with wild rats eating crops. The cropper's solution to this was to import mongooses to deal with them. Anyway, the mongoose situation might have worked out if it weren't for the fact that the mongoose, which hunt during the day, seldom crossed paths with the nocturnal rodents that were only active at night. And to this day, the mongoose continue to be a problem across most of the Hawaiian islands. And while it is true that mongoose are typically diurnal, and rats are mostly nocturnal, it is false to think that the mongoose did not have an effect on rat populations. The introduction of mongoose in Hawaii is thanks to the fact that rats were ravaging the sugarcane industry. To quote an article written in 1882, featured in the Proceedings of the General Meetings for Scientific Business of the Zoological Society of London, For nearly 200 years, the sugar planters have had to contend with this serious difficulty, and on most estates, from 200 to 300 pounds a year have been expended in destroying the rats by poison, traps and baits, and in rat catchers and dogs. This expenditure, however, only represented a fraction of the loss resulting from the injury and destruction of the canes and of the sugar they contained. Later, in that same article, author W. Bancroft Espew details his experience with introducing the mongoose to Jamaica and how the sugarcane plantations there began to see a decrease in rat populations as the mongoose spread out further. Quote, Fewer rats were caught and fewer canes were destroyed, month after month. Within two years, the expenditure for killing rats ceased almost entirely, and in another year I enjoyed relief and immunity. And ever since, the losses from rats have been a mere trifle. While there were no experiments done here to back up his claims, we can assume that he is telling the truth from a first-hand account. William Bancroft Espew served as a member of the Legislative Council of Jamaica and was also the governor of the Jamaica Institute of Science, Arts, and Literature. Therefore, his testimony that rat populations are indeed affected by mongoose at the time has some credibility. Why is the mongoose a problem, then, if it did what it was supposed to? It is a problem because they hunt native endemic species of birds and even eat sea turtle eggs. They are causing the populations of these creatures to decline and become endangered. Sure, the mongoose was great for killing off rats, but unfortunately it is a very good hunter and has set its sights on other prey as well. So why should you, a first year student attending UH Manoa, take immediate action against the mongoose. As students of the University of Hawaii, it is important to know and understand the culture of Hawaii. Many native birds sacred to the Hawaiian culture are in decline due to the threats of invasive species such as the mongoose. Not only do the mongoose themselves hunt and kill these precious birds, but they are also known to steal and devour their eggs. It would be challenging, if not impossible, to bring back these species if they cannot safely hatch from their eggs. Invasive species like the mongoose often do irreversible damage to the ecosystem, threatening natural communities and ecological processes. This ultimately threatens human usage of natural resources, causing not only ecological distribution impacts, but also economical impacts. So what do we do now that the mongoose has taken over the islands? The most commonly used control measures include the use of box traps, namely the DOC-250 and Tomahawk Live Traps. Trapping is very effective and will usually trap a mongoose within one day. You can use several types of bait, including a wet cat food, fruits, and chicken. They especially love anything that has a strong odor that their nose can pick up on. In terms of what traps to use when catching mongoose, the DOC-250 traps are most effective as they mimic the natural burrowing environment that mongoose are used to. Thank you so much for clicking on our video, which discussed the topic of the invasive species of mongoose in Hawaii. We hope that you learned something by watching our video today. 
and we hope that you too will take actions to Malama Aina starting now.